you know, I started out with the, with the anorexic addiction. And in order to be healed, I had just went step by step myself, basically. I knew I was out of my body because every time I became sick, it had to do with spirit going so high that it couldn't be held in the body. It couldn't be, couldn't deal with the grief. And so when I finally realized that I had to do something changed 100% or die, I started to work with dreams and images, particularly writing. And my motivation there was that I felt proud of myself when I was creating from myself. I felt there was somebody inside that was doing those pictures or writing. My way of working with addictions is to try to find where they are creative. Where can the real light come in? The real light or the real God or the real goddess so that the create create god creates is the energy that can pull you from an, a, a satanic energy that is taking you into death to a living energy that will take you into your own creation and then i began to have dreams of this black goddess mm. And she would, she was very noble. And I could never see her face, but I would make my obeisance to her. And she would say, lower. <laughs> lower? I had to bow lower. I was already on my knees where I thought, how does one get lower? So, in this spongy, mossy place, I did get my elbows down onto the ground, my hands onto the ground, and I was kneeling and before this being. And again, the voice came lower, very loving and very firm and I was quite nervous so I just lay flat out on the ground face down put my hands out just full on this very mossy warm black earth and I really felt the blackness and the and the moss, and it was good. What do you think her injunction to you to go lower means? What does that mean? You have not yet learned humility, girl. There, you, you must lie flat on the ground and feel the living pulse of the earth and know that you are part of that pulse and not experience it as demeaning but as a um, lesson that had to be learned on the way to knowing that feminine presence. Why can you only know the presence of the dark feminine through this radical embrace of the ground, of the moss, of the earth? Well, of course, I think that she is of the earth. The dark feminine to me is the earth. We live on our mother. And this globe going around in space is our mother. 
who feeds us physically, then you think of the glory of the flowers and the glory of springtime and the perfume, the color, the shapes, and the soul rises to, to the spiritual dimension. All our senses come alive in her presence. So I was very, very much in touch with the, the spirit, God the spirit. But I had no sense of God in the earth. I believe that we are going to be forced into a recognition of the feminine as divine. And again, love the earth, recognize the creation that is the earth, this earth and the child that can be born from that earth. And that is the Black Madonna for me. And, but it's not only earth, it is the spirit that's in the earth and the glory and the beauty of all those living things. And so this experience of moving lower and, and smelling the earth and feeling its energy and opening my own body as part of that earth. That was a new experience, but very exciting. I felt a new energy coming in. Can I ask you about that? ball, that orb back there. Can that, you tell us about... Well, you know, I, I took a trip around the world. Uh, you see, there is a destiny that shapes our ends, rough hew them how we will. I knew that there was something in me that was wild and determined to determine to live or die, didn't care which. And so as I grew older um, and coming up to, to 40, this other side said, I am going to live, Marion, whether you like it or not. And so I went to India. And that's where I certainly met the Black Madonna, because it was that earth and the glory of the earth and the creation of the earth, just looking right there at everywhere you looked, you couldn't miss it. And I found it extremely terrifying and um, equally exciting, but then, I just became totally, I just was so exhausted I couldn't move. And then I became really sick. So I stayed in my room. And there was nobody, absolutely nobody to take care of me. I knew nobody. And so I just lay in bed reading Shakespeare's sonnets because I was running a very high temperature and I read my passport just to be sure who I was. And then at the bottom of the distant tree, I decided that I had to start relating or I wasn't gonna make it. So I got dressed and went down to the foyer of the hotel. And I was feeling very shy and very frightened. And so I sat down on a couch right in the corner. And this woman came along, a large, very dark woman, and squeezed between me and the end of the couch. There was a whole couch she could have sat on, but no, she squeezed. And I had, of course, to, to move over to make room for her. And then I 
wasn't quite sure how I felt. And she pushed with her arm against mine. She had no sleeves, nor did I. And this warm, warm arm just came right down my whole arm. She didn't say hello, nothing. She just put her arm there. And I thought, it's so lovely to, to, to feel that warm arm on mine. And there's a black arm and white arm. So I just pushed back and, and really took in the feel of relaxing into a beautiful black mother. And she was lovely. But she never spoke to me, and I didn't speak to her. And then gradually, she pushed against my whole body. And every place she touched me, I was alive again. And then I realized we were at the other end of the couch. She kept pushing, and I was sort of nervous, so I pushed, we got the other end of the couch. And I thought I should go to my room. Because the container was starting to break, couldn't hold it. So I did go to my room. The next day, I decided to go down again. And again she came. And again we went to the other end of the couch. But I now I'm stronger and able to eat and, and able to take in what's happening. So this happened maybe five, six times, day after day. And then a man came to me, an Indian man. And he said, my wife won't have to come and see you anymore. Hmm. And I said, why? And he said, because you're not going to die. He said, I saw that you were dying in the foyer the other day. So I sent my wife to sit with you. But you're going to be living. So that was my first experience of the Black Madonna. And that woman, unquestionably, at the calling of her husband, see, I think it's extremely important that he was the one that saw the situation and set up the possibility of healing. I think the Black Madonna is present in the whole experience that you're describing because she works paradoxically, doesn't she? So she destroyed you, she brought you to the edge of death and then she appeared in human form to heal you. So it was par paradox all the way. That the, the, something had to be destroyed in order for me to give up my ego plans. I had to give up the perfection and give up what I would call now that, that, that golden spirit world that wanted whatever, quote, I thought perfection was. I had to completely let it go. She had to break you. She had to break me in order to make room for the genuine feminine and the genuine masculine to come through. <laughs> 